love is higher than the skies up above. Your love is wider than what I can dream of. Your love is deeper. It's the greatest of all. Come on, everybody, sing it, yeah. Your, Your love is higher than the skies up above. Your love is wider than what I can dream of. Your love is deeper. It's the greatest of all. Your love is higher than the skies up above. Your Every love hand lifted is wider across the sanctuary. Can we do that? Is his love great to you this Your morning? Is, is it great to you? Yeah. It's the greatest of all. Yeah. Your love is higher. Your love is higher than the skies up above. Your love is wider than what I can dream of. Your love is deeper. It's the greatest oh, of all. Oh, your love. Your love is higher than the skies up above. Your love is wider than what I can dream of. Your love is deeper. It's the greatest of all. Oh, he's saying, how many of you love? His love is so great. We could shout, praise the Lord. Can we do that? Is his love that great to you? One, two, three. Praise the Lord. How many of you, his love is so great? We can shout, we give you glory on three. One, two, three. We give you glory. We praise you. Now that now on three, let's give him just a round of praise with our hands. One, two, three. Come on. Come on. Let's put our hands together. Yeah. Your love is higher than the skies up above. Your love is wider than what I can dream of. Your love is deeper. It's the greatest of all. Softly, boys. Your love is higher than us. But I will not give up. I'm just hard headed. Hey, see, my dad and my mom used to tell me I was hard headed. Amen. Amen. But see, now I'm using that negative hard headedness for God's power. Amen. Because I'm hard headed for Him. I'm just crazy Kentucky enough. Amen. To believe my, my God will intervene. Amen. I've got something to be excited about. I've got a fire that burns down in my soul, and I will not let it be quenched out. I will not. If all of y'all just stay seated all the time, Brad's going to be up there. I give you glory. <laughs> I've never been one that could just sit back and just be quiet. I remember back in school, they had these things in Kentucky called a conduct grade. Okay, I've probably told this before. I hated them. I hated them. My fifth grade year, right before we moved up here, we had six, six weeks is how it was. The first three, I got a B in conduct grade. Amen. The next one went down to a C. Next one, I went down to a D. And it wasn't because I was bad. It was the fact I liked to talk too much. Imagine that. See, your problems could lead to your purpose. My hard-headedness has led to my purpose. Amen. My big mouth, that was a problem when I was younger. Amen. When it's re-diverted into the right thing, has led to, amen, to my functionality of my purpose. Now I have a big mouth for God. Amen. Now when I get up, I got something to say. Amen. And I'm not going to shut up. There's a fire down inside now. I've probably got an F in conduct this morning. Because I was up there like this on the piano. I hit my head on the mic one time. I don't know if y'all seen it. I got, that's the problem with closing your eyes. If y'all guys had just come up and start worshiping, I wouldn't have to close my eyes so much. But when I closed my eyes, I hit my head on the microphone. We 
we got to move. we got to move. Turn that negativity into positive momentum. Amen? Turn the things that try to slow you down, that has the wrong motives, and divert it around to momentum for your purpose. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Paul and Silas, they got enough of it. Amen? When are you going to have, get enough of God? When are you going to have enough, get enough of God? Listen, you've got to, if you want God to move, amen, you need to move. You want him to move in a mighty way, then move enough to get the momentum going. Have you ever noticed when it rains, it pours a lot of times. It works like that with God too, amen. Amen, when it rains, it pours, amen, with blessings. Why is that? Because we've got the momentum going. When the people are praising God and the momentum's going and they're moving, it turns the ear of God. It turns his ear. It gets his focus more, I think. I'm going to get to this part eventually. Verse 18, it said, And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Listen, when Jesus comes on the cha- scene, he changes the motivation. He changes the motives. When Jesus comes on the scene. See, Jesus got a hold of me from when I was a kid. And he changed the motivation. I still had the same uh, gift of gab. Still got it. Hopefully I'll always get it. I always have it. But he changed my motivation. No longer was it motivated by the lust of the flesh. I mean, wanting to jar at somebody about, about something going on. But he changed the motivation. He made me want to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. It made me want to talk about the great things that he's done. Amen. The word of God giving it to you. He changed my motivation. When the master gives the right motivation... You pick up momentum and you move with the Almighty towards His mark. When the Master, everybody say when the Master, gives the right motivation. Come on. You pick up momentum. And you move. With the Almighty toward His mark. It's a lot of M's in there, isn't it? We need to give it to Jesus. When it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, are we really doing that? To move or not to move? It's your choice. He don't make you move. Now, sometimes he may make you go a certain direction, and it's not that he's putting something in your way or in your, uh, in your path, but he may allow you to go through things because, I mean, sometimes that's the only momentum we would, we would ever get is being forced to go a certain direction. We don't like to be made to do anything. But some of us would be spiritually dead if we never had to go through anything. The problems help us reach our purpose. God don't make us do anything, but sometimes he allows us to go through stuff. And if we didn't have to go through it, if we didn't have to go through it, we'd be spiritually dead because we'd be still. This is my seat right here. I'm going to sit right here. Amen. That's where we'd be the whole time. Then we'd go and we'd sit in the car. And we go home, sit on the couch. When are we going to get tired of sitting? See, Paul and Silas, they had enough. They had enough of the devil fighting. When are we going to have enough? When are we going to have enough? Listen, every one of us, we know our weaknesses. You can act like you don't, but you know. You know where you're weak at. You know the things that you fall at and you struggle with, whether it may be blowing up or whether it may be depression or whether it may be yelling at somebody at work or holding ill feelings or anger. We know where our weaknesses are. When are you going to move and push past it? That move... 
may just start the momentum that we need to just roll past several things in our life, to be able to leave. I remember there was something in my life that I struggled hard with. I mean, bad, hard with. Well, Pastor Brad, you really struggle with something? Yes, I struggle hard with it. Quite often. And you know what happened? My vote, my motivation had to change. That idle time, brother. That idle time. It was taking a toll on me. But I it was it was the wrong motivation. When I put my motivation towards doing nothing, I got myself in trouble. When I was always, when I was giving myself too much free time, I got myself in trouble. My motivation was worried about having free time. I got myself in trouble. But when my motivation changed, and I had to spend more of my motivation working for God and putting more of my motivation towards God, my motives, they didn't waver so much. And I refused to accept anything less than the blessings of God. I will move to the day that I die. You can take an older person when they retire. If they don't stay out and do something, they don't last very long, do they, Brother Kevin? Most, if not all the time. They got to keep moving. Got to keep them joints lubricated. All these spiritual joints in this spiritual body, it's got to stay lubricated because I got to stay moving. If you notice when I preach, I pace. I got to stay moving. I may be high strung, but I'm going to use that problem. Amen. I may be ADHD. Amen. If they had it back when I was when I was little, I probably would have been diagnosed with it. But that hyperness, amen, now I get to use for the Almighty God because my motivation has changed since Jesus came into my life. Let's stand. Oh, you yeah. mm. Some of you guys' motivation needs to change. Your motivation needs to change. You need to pick up some momentum. Are you sick and tired of it yet? Are you sick and tired of it yet? Because the devil ain't going to let up until he's got you. He ain't going to let up till you got you. When is enough going to be enough? When is enough going to be enough? Amen. Right now, could we all come up here and just pray? Amen. As Miss Carol put some music on. Let's all just gather around the altar.